point of this video is to kind of show you some techniques, tips, and some things to be concerned about when autoclaving for reagents in a molecular biology lab. By no means is this going to be something you want to use in the healthcare field. They're going to be under stringent uh, standard operating procedure protocols. These are just quick and dirty tips for things we can use for creating media, creating sterile consumables for use doing molecular biology techniques, and working with basic bacteria in the lab. First I want to show you just a couple things you need to be concerned about when you're prepping samples or items for an autoclave. First and foremost is you need to make sure that the items are actually made up of an autoclavable type of material. So in this particular case, one of the most common types that you're going to run into a laboratory that is autoclavable is polypropylene or PP. And so that's what these bottles are made up. So I'm going to show you how to deal with those types. And also when you do glass bottles or Erlenmeyer flasks or things along that line, make sure it's Chymex or Pyrex or something that can withstand high temperatures. Autoclaves are going to get it up to a temperature of about 121 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty significant. So items that cannot withstand that temperature and also the pressure that the autoclave is going to go through are going to be destroyed under that process. Another important thing in the molecular biology lab is just an indication that the item has actually been brought up to temperature. And that's where we use autoclave tape. In kind of a food testing environment, you'll also see autoclave tape along with spore strips that will actually contain a type of spore or bacterium that is heat resistant up to 121 degrees Celsius. So if it grows after autoclaving, it shows that the appropriate temperature and time at that temperature has not been reached. Uh, in a molecular biology lab, usually this is quick and dirty and it's good enough for what we do in terms of media and creating sterile Eppendorf tubes or microcentrifuge tubes. Uh, another useful friend is tinfoil. So I'm going to just, what I usually do if I want to have a sterile Erlenmeyer flask, is just cap it off with some tinfoil or aluminum foil, and then I put my strip of autoclave tape on the top. That way, once I pull it out, I can't get contamination from above, and so the only time it will then get contaminated is if I remove this tin foil. So it's a pretty good barrier for just general growth or general medium. Uh, I typically will prep a lot of glass borosilicate tubes for many preps. Use a stainless steel cap, and I autoclave them in an autoclavable container and then I put the autoclave tape on the side, that way when I reach in my lab bench, I know they've been autoclaved and are sterile. For pipette tips, I'll put them in the container. Do check with the manufacturer specs because some tips are not autoclavable, or they may be autoclavable for only a certain period of time. And then I'll put the autoclave tape over the hinge, that way I know when it's been opened. As I talked about, the types of plastic are really important. One of the most common type you're going to run into is polypropylene is autoclavable. I'm going to, just for demonstration's sake, show you uh, polyethylene and low-density polyethylene just to see what happens to that when it's autoclaved. And I'm also going to show you, and that's why I have our targets here, what happens when you don't cap it properly. Uh, manufacturer specs usually state that you just set the cap on there and do not engage the threads. And so what I'm going to do is do it the proper way. Do one where the threads are all the way down. And then somewhere it's all the way down. And then once I remove it, remove it, I'm going to seat the, engage the threads so you can see what happens if you do not allow it to cool properly after autoclaving is done. And then for a lot of things, especially when you're doing liquid, a secondary container is very useful. That way if there is any boil over or spillage that occurs, that the spillage goes into the container and not actually into the autoclave itself. Because if you are autoclaving auger or something along that line, it may actually clog the machine and prevent it from working. You're probably going to annoy a lot of people if you do that. So that's kind of what I do to kind of prep samples. In terms of liquids, they do say the container should contain, you should fill it up no more than two-thirds of the actual volume. That helps reduce boiling over. Just to tell you a little bit about autoclave, this is a nice little bench top model that maybe a lot of labs don't have, but it's kind of older in nature. Uh, this is kind of unique in that you've got to pour your water in here, and then it also just basically tells you pressure and temperature. It's kind of what most autoclaves are going to do. Um, but do realize it's a very hefty piece of equipment because these are going to withstand a lot of pressure. Uh, so basically what it's going to do is I will place my samples inside. 
And of course, if this is hot, you'll definitely want to be wearing some gloves, and I'll do that when I actually pull the things out of here. They'll have a very sturdy lid that you are going to seal down and then button to do it. Most of these are automated, so they'll have media cycles or dry cycles that you can utilize. This one, I just have a selector switch that allow me to do from fast to slow kind of exhaust. Uh, if you have a liquid, you want to do a slow exhaust because it's going to gradually decrease the pressure Why it's also decreasing the temperature. If you have a huge decrease in pressure, what will typically happen is you'll boil over your liquids. So once again, you'll want to pay attention to what you're actually autoclaving, and typically you'll do liquids separate from dry, consumable type of uh, equipment. All right, now I'm going to load my samples and place them in here. If this autoclave has been on for the day, I will typically uh, wear gloves, but this has not been turned on, so it's not hot. Remember, I try to place my items in a secondary container, and remember caps are loose. I'm just going to set those on. in here and then for good measure I'm going to put in some polystyrene set it down and seal a container and for this particular case I'm going to autoclave for 15 minutes on fast exhaust Okay, as you can see, we're at pressure, which is above 15 pounds per square inch. So no fooling about this. This is very dangerous uh, when you're working with this. It's under extremely high pressure, and it's at, in this case, 250 degrees Fahrenheit or approximately 121 degrees Celsius. So this is now in the autoclaving mode or the sterilization mode. Okay, now for the fun part. After everything is done, Never ever open an autoclave until the temperature is down below about 220 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or you know a little bit above 100 degrees Celsius and never ever try to open it if the pressure is still there. This was up to 15 pounds per square inch. As we can see on the dial it's now down to zero. All right, now some clear understanding here. This is extremely dangerous piece of equipment to work with. First of all, it got up to that pressure utilizing steam. So what you have to realize is when I open this, a large amount of steam is going to come open. Hence the reason I'm wearing my protective, uh, personal protective equipment, and I'm going to wear gloves because this thing was up to a 121 degrees Celsius. When I open this, you're going to realize that steam is going to pour out, so I'm going to keep my face and my arm away from that. Uh, a lot of the newer autoclaves will have mechanisms and safety features to prevent you from getting hurt by this. This particular one will allow me to get burned. And then also, I'm going to have a piece of equipment that I, a tray or a cart that I can put my stuff on. So pay attention and you can see what's going to happen when I open this. Notice the steam coming out. I'm wearing the appropriate equipment. I do not want my face or my arms or anything to be near this. All right, and then I can pull out my equipment. The steam is still going to be rushing out, so that's why I got to be careful. First thing you'll realize, polystyrene is not autoclavable. So now that big polystyrene is now a little miniature. And now I can pull out my equipment. My autoclave tape has changed temperature, so I know it at least uh, went up to 121 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to pull out my secondary equipment. Remember, one that was loose, I'm now going to tighten. And to show you also, my polyethylene is autoclavable, so what used to be a squirt bottle is now no longer a squirt bottle. And that is autoclaving. And now we'll see what happens to the bottle after a period of time. Do you realize this is still hot? and you'll want to leave it available for the next person to use. And also, as these gloves get wet, they are not able to insulate against heat, so try to avoid getting these wet. All right, just to show you again, here are my three bottles. This one is a loose cap. While this is still cooling down, I'm going to keep it cool. This one was actually capped while I was in the autoclave, and since it wasn't able to equalize pressure, it did bulge it out a little bit. If that was a glass bottle, it may have busted. 
and now the one that was pulled out I've now capped it so what we're going to see as this cools off is these are capped and we'll see what that's going to cause in terms of effect uh, here is the bottle made from polyethylene you can see it's a nice beautiful little melted mass and then the rest in terms of autoclaving okay so as these cool as you can see the one that is capped after I cooled it down as the air pressure decreases we start to create a vacuum and hopefully you can see it's kind of folding in a little bit and in many cases uh, these can be very difficult to open uh, now that's not sterile anymore but one of the problems that can happen is this this kind of folds in and creates a very tight vacuum with the cap when it's completely cool and you actually can't get the material that you just autoclaved